Hey boys and girls, uh, this is Miss Holland one more time, and this is lecture number three on cell respiration. So let's go ahead and dive into um, some little concepts here before we get started on the electron transport chain. One thing I want to talk about really quickly is the similarities as well as differences between the chloroplast as well as the mitochondria. Now the chloroplast, I want to emphasize, used to live by itself as well as the mitochondria. They both have a double membrane. They both have their own DNA as well as their own ribosomes. The chloroplast, as you guys can know, makes oxygen and sugar, whereas the mitochondria produces water and CO2. Now, ironically, this is what each other needs. So when the chloroplast produces oxygen and sugar, it chips it to the mitochondria. The mitochondrial, in turn, will break apart the oxygen and sugar and produce CO2 and water, which will go back to the chloroplast. The energy that the mitochondria makes will allow the plant or the organism to actually grow, develop, reproduce, do whatever it needs. So the theory in the past is that the chloroplast and the mitochondria used to be their own prokaryotic cells who got engulfed into a larger cell and somehow formed a symbiotic relationship. So that larger cell did not eat the chloroplast or mitochondria, and somehow they survived, and that symbiotic or mutualistic relationship um, in turn did, and this allowed for the production of advanced eukaryotic cells and plants that, that we know today. Now, I want to go through one more time the process of aerobic respiration. So keep in mind that heterotrophs, which are organisms that need to eat food, will eat their sugar. Autotrophs, which are organisms can, that can automatically make their food, are going to go through the process of photosynthesis using our chloroplasts. Also remember from your lectures on photosynthesis that your reactants, the things that are going into <clears throat> the chloroplast, are going to be your CO2, your water, and your sunlight. The products that come out of photosynthesis is going to be your sugar and your oxygen. Go ahead and take a moment. You should have this already from previous lectures, but feel free to stop this video and write this down. Now let's go ahead and continue. The sugar here, remember from video one on cell respiration, talks about glycolysis. The sugar is way too big, so we're going to take our sugar, we're going to rip it apart. Remember, it takes two ATP to go in. We're going to make four, and that gives us a net product of about two ATP. That production is now what's known as pyruvic acid. Just a single three carbon pyruvic acid is known as pyruvate. Pyruvate from lecture two, we talked about the Krebs cycle. We got shipped inside the matrix of our mitochondria and that in turn produced not only CO2 as a product, but also a bunch of energy storage molecules such as NAD and fat. <clears throat> The NADH, FADH are going to journey into this lecture today, which is going to talk about the electron transport chain. Our end product of aerobic respiration, which is this entire process coming to the very end here, is going to be water, 36 ATP, and of course your CO2. Remember the connection here. The water and the CO2 are going to journey back into the chloroplast here, and it's a nice, tight internal cycle here. We, on the other hand, do not have the ability to be green and photosynthesized, so we're missing the link here. So we need to actually eat our sugar, and then we will breathe out the CO2 and water. All right, guys, so this is actually a page from the biology coloring book that you can actually get at, you know, Borders, Barnes & Noble, any of that fun stuff. But I wanted to show you the quick overview before I go into it specifically. When I talk about the mitochondria, this is what he looks like here. The purple is the matrix, so that's where we just conducted our Krebs cycle. We're going to go out to the edge here, okay? So we're going to be making a bunch of hydrogen ions that are going to go into this pink spot here, which is known as the intermembrane. And then we're going to be sh um, shipping our ATP back into this matrix, which in turn will eventually work itself out and conduct um, its energy. This is one view of the process, but let me give you guys a more simplified view. Here is the process that we're going to go through right now to explain the electron transport chain. 
So feel free to stop this video, draw this out if you like, and then we will continue. Alright guys, let's go look at this a little bit more in detail. Remember our glucose came in from food that we ate, or it was produced by our chloroplasts, that in turn is going to get ripped apart through the process known as glycolysis, which will make pyruvic acid. That pyruvate is going to go inside the matrix of the mitochondria, and it's going to go through our little Krebs cycle. We're going to ship out three molecules of CO2, and we're also going to forward some energy molecules, your NADH, FADH, and some ATP, to what's known as the inner membrane. Now between this membrane here, this is known as the intermembrane and the outside wall of the actual mitochondria, this is where a lot of the action is going to be taking place. Go ahead and take a moment and write down that the electron transfer chain, which is also known as the oxidative phosphorylation, was actually discovered by Peter Mitchell in 1961, and this is a process that the process that we're going to discuss right now. Okay, guys and girls, here is our game on the ETC. So again, go ahead and take a moment to turn this off, draw this out, and we will continue in when you're ready. All right, let's go ahead and start. We are going to take the NADH that we just produced in our matrix, as well as the FADH that we just produced again during the Krebs cycle. We're going to ship them into a protein here, and that in turn is going to rip it apart into what's known as NAD, and then some hydrogen ions, okay? The FAD is going to get shipped into a protein, get ripped apart into FAD, as well as some hydrogen ions. Now, because we're creating almost a high to low pressure, these hydrogen ions are going to get shipped over to the other side. And when you rip apart a molecule here, we also create a little bit of these electrons. The electrons, which is why this thing is called an electron transport chain, will journey through these proteins and get shipped out over here, which in turn will connect our oxygen, which we threw into this process here, because you need oxygen for this to happen, with a couple of hydrogen ions ripped apart from these guys, and oxygen and hydrogen ions create, lo and behold, H2O. Now this side here, we're going to be shipping across about four hydrogen ions. Here's another four. We're also going to be shipping across, <clears throat> not only making water on this side, but also pulling about two hydrogen ions across. Now there's more hydrogen ions on this side. So all of this is going to cause a high to low pressure, and they cannot get across any of these membranes. So what's going to happen is that they're going to go through another protein that's known as your ATP synthase. And so this is going to get shot across. This thing kind of does a little pinwheel thing. And on the outside, you have a DP plus a phosphoric acid. And by shooting these hydrogen ions across, they connect together to create ATP. And that is pretty much your process of the electron transport chain. Okay, and just for some extra information here, for every four hydrogen ions that get shipped over to this side, we end up making one ATP. Well, there's so many hydrogen ions that get shipped over because of the production of our NAD and FAD during the Krebs cycle that we end up creating a byproduct of 36 ATP. The process of going through the ATP synthase here is known as phosphorylation, which is making ATP. For those of you that are in AP Bio, if you need to know the specific proteins, here they are. When NAD comes in, this is your NADH reductase sucking through the hydrogen ions. It breaks apart the electrons and goes to your Q protein or ubiquin. Then it cruises through. This protein over here is your cytochrome reductase, which takes in the FADH, again ripping apart more electrons heads over to cytochrome C, and eventually the cytochrome oxidase is the pro protein which in turn will produce the water. Again, all these electrons here will journey on over to your ATP synthase enzyme, which will pump out the hydrogen ions, connecting the ADP to make your ATP. Therefore, your final products of your electron transport chain is water and 36 ATP. Thank you.